Welcome to the Soccer Locker. My name is Jesse Ryder and I'm your Soccer Locker host. I am so excited to be with you today. You know, I have played soccer for a long time. I've coached for a long time and I've I've long been a fan of soccer, so this is going to be a good time today. On today's episode, we're going to look at the top five girls team, top five boys teams in the area, our girls player of the week, boys player of the week, and a new feature, our goal of the week in which you, the fan, will get to cast your vote for what was the best area soccer goal of the week. So we're going to have a lot of fun together and just get a chance to really just to look at some area soccer. So let's get right into it and look at the top five girls soccer teams in the area. So this is a ranking we do just for fun, just kind of look at some of the, the wins, the losses, the, the great games we get to see, like this one behind me right now we get to call the other night. So we have a lot of quality girls teams in the area. So without further ado, let's get right into the top five. At number five, Loudonville Lady Redbirds. They were in here last week and we talked about Sydney Poland and just the fantastic season that she's having. Just beat Mapleton 3-2 to two the other night with a record and one and she is a fantastic player and this Loudonville team just keeps on winning schedules not incredibly difficult they'll look to finish the season with a pretty strong note and get right into that MBC conference tournament followed by the state tournament as well so there could be a lot of wins and a lot of goals from this Lady Redbirds team at number four we have what's not a great record in the Madison Lady Rams at five six and one but they play probably the toughest schedule in the area if not the state of Ohio. Quality teams up and down their schedule. Every other game is nearly a state-ranked opponent or a conference opponent. And so they are playing some quality competition and they're getting good chances. They're getting good results, not necessarily wins, but they're competitive in so many games. And you know their struggle has been to really score a lot of goals. And so they really have to concede maybe one goal, maybe not even a goal to really be in some of these games, but a, a, a tough 3-1 loss to number 16 in Division One to Anthony Wayne. And, and so they just continually play top-ranked teams, tough schedule, and they are a tough opponent for anybody locally. Number three, new to our top five. We left them out week one, but after a pretty impressive showing these past couple of weeks, Lady Lex make this top five debut, coming in at 5-3-3. Three, and three. A great win against that Madison team we just talked about. And a great week, a great win against Mainsville Christian, who had been previously ranked in our top five. A game that we covered right here on the OH Report. This is a Lexington team. You know, we talked about in that post-game interview. This is a team, certainly it's full of juniors and seniors. But with last year's senior heavy team, this made it difficult for this team to really get a lot of minutes on the field. So it, it's a relatively young but old varsity team and so i think the more they play the better they're going to be with with a tough schedule played ontario super tight played clear fork to a tie i mean they they're playing some tough teams and have bexley remaining on the schedule this is a very tough lexington team and i think they're continuing to get better and better and if they can keep scoring they're going to give themselves plenty of chances to win a lot of games down the stretch Number two, we have the Clear Fork Lady Colts coming at 9-2-2. Two, and two. This is a fantastic team, starting to find their groove a little bit. We've covered them a couple of times on the OH Report, and they have a big showdown coming against Granville. Not much going on in their week or past week or so. Playing just some of their conference opponents, winning pretty handily in both of those, and then beating Worcester as well. And so there is a lot of talent on this Clear Fork team. They're young, they're exciting, they're fun. And I think the more they play these tough games, the better their team that is going to be come tournament time. And so it's fun to just kind of watch them continually to improve. And Coach Bechtel does a great job of kind of making sure that that's the benchmark. They're not going to settle for where they're at, but they want to be the best team they can be by the end of the season. But without a doubt, number one in the area who has just been on a tear, the Lady Warriors from Ontario have been absolutely fantastic scoring a bunch of goals led by two freshmen up top Hattie Yukovich and Addie Pittman have just been tearing it up 20 and 17 goals respectively beating Clear Fork to kind of just lay claim to the number one team in the area have some tough games coming up with Medina and Liberty Benton so we're going to find out how good they are certainly they're top in the area but could it be that they're top in the state as well this is a super talented team and we'll we'll talk about them a little bit later in the episode but Ontario Lady Warriors number one in our rankings this week and just continue to win and to score and to win by a lot beating uh, Galleon and Marion Pleasant both by 12 goals so rather convincing conference wins there and got some big opponents coming up so it'll be 
great to see how do they match up with some of the, these big opponents and you know state ranked opponents that they have coming on their schedule very soon. You know, one of the things we love to do on the OH Report is is highlight those players who are performing at a high level. And so we do a player of the week every week that we just kind of celebrate somebody who's just doing something incredible. This week from Mapleton, Brindley Youngen, who has an incredible goal scoring right now. I believe 33 goal, 35 goals, excuse me, 10 assists, 35 goals, and just been on a tear for Mapleton. You know, she's on pace. She could be looking at a 50-goal season, depending on how their postseason plays out. You know, what I love about Mapleton and really the Mid-Buckeye Conference in general is this, they have so many great goal scorers. We talked about Sydney Poland, Abby Little from Mansell Christian, and Brindley Youngen, who our own Brian Scaranti got a chance to meet and interview. Let's see how it went. All right, I've got Mapleton junior striker Brindley Young in with me now. She's averaging almost three goals per contest so far this season. So take me through the year up to this point and how you've become such a dynamic playmaker for your team. My dad taught me a lot of different stuff about soccer, like teaching me how to score, shoot, offsides, passing, all that stuff. And I had my dad as a coach for five years. Just from then on, my dad made who I was to be. So last year as a sophomore, 13 goals for you, which is still a pretty good season as a youngster, but to be able to elevate your game now to where you're on pace to have like 45 on the season, in what ways would you say that you've progressed quite a bit as an attacker? Just follow my passion for the game, and which means work hard practice, Working hard outside practice, work with teammates, all that stuff. As an individual though, I mean, you get off to this crazy start. Since you do have 35 goals, is there a number now that you have in mind? Are you trying to get to like a certain spot or even uh, try to outdo a school record or anything at this point? Well, my main goal is to get to 100 by the end of next year. It just takes work. Just being a good player, team player, being there for my teammates when they need it, all that stuff. All right, well, we'll certainly be rooting for you here on the OH Report to try to get to that honey spot. Like 100 goals, that's a lot. So uh, congratulations on all the early success and keep on keeping on. Hoping to see you have a deep tournament run this season. Thanks, Brian, for that interview. It was so much fun to hear from this area, high school athletes and how they're doing. And certainly we're excited to see how many goals can Brindley Young and score this year. She is doing well so far, and congratulations on being our soccer player of the week. But let's get into the boys' side of things. For those that know, I coached the Mansfield Christian boys for a long period of time and kind of since retired, so to speak, but I still love to watch boys' soccer. And I have to give a shout out to the Mansfield Christian team. They're not in the top five. They are a quality team. Usually, kind of year in and year out, of our top five teams that are currently in the top five, one of those teams has a little bit of down year, and Mansfield Christian can maybe creep in there. But this year, the top five area teams are just really strong. So Mansfield Christian is certainly a great record. I, I think they're going to do some, uh, some great things come this, the, the tournament time, but not quite in the top five yet. So number five in the top five is the Madison Rams. This is a Madison team that is fun to watch. They are talented, they are tough, and they are good. They beat Galleon, beat New Philadelphia, played Worcester nearly to a 1-1 draw. Worcester scores late at the end to win. Lex was tied with, or with Madison 0-0 at half, and Lex pulls away, gets four goals in the second half. But this is a Madison team. They are good, and they can play, and they are continuing to get better and better. And come tournament time, this is the team I want to stay away from. I do not want to match up with Madison. They're young, they're exciting, they're energetic, and they score, and they can defend. You know, the, the Jameson brothers have done a great job over there as well. So number five right now, the Madison Rams. Coming in at number four is the Ontario Warriors, who come in at 500, but play a really tough schedule. Six and six right now, but I believe at least five of those six losses have come to state-raked opponents. So they have a loaded schedule. Now, they've not come away with a lot of positive results against those state rate opponents, but certainly they're competing. They're in those games. They've played the likes of Bay, Revere, Warren Halland, Lexington, some really top caliber teams, and Ashland in the mix as well. And so this is an Ontario team. It's very good. They're very strong. They are a good team, just with a tough, tough schedule. So I, I see that 6-6, six and six, but I know this is, this is a strong, strong team. 
At number three, we have the Ashland Arrows coming at seven, five, and one. Now, this is where it gets a little controversial. I know they beat Lexington, but they just have some bad losses and some pretty lopsided losses at that. And I think it's the type of season where some of those losses can come back to haunt you a little bit. So I, I know they beat Lexington. I get that. Don't at me in the comments. I, I get that they lost to Lexington, but at the same time, they lost by five to Perrysburg, lost by five to Worcester. I think lost by five or more to Olentangy Liberty. Right? Th those are three bad losses, and Ashland certainly has the ability to be a really good team. I just think it kind of turns on and off for them at times. So number three, Ashland, which means number two is Lexington Minutemen. Played a great game against Ottawa Hills, 5-2 against one of the top teams in Division Three, beating Ottawa Hills, an old rival of mine, so I love to see him lose. No offense to any Ottawa Hill fans out there, but it's always fun to watch you lose. And then a tough loss to Worcester, kind of the marquee match of the game we're looking forward to see kind of who is the true number one in the area, and number one in the area is, in fact, Worcester. Coming up with a big 3-1 win against Lexington. This is a Worcester team that is super talented. Currently ranked number 15 in Division 1. Took up, I'll say, a bit of a, a, a surprise loss to Maslin Jackson. Certainly we, we know the talent that Worcester has and the ability that they, they possess. But just a, a bit of an unfortunate loss to Maslin Jackson. But it, it's one of those things that I think teams around Worcester know how good Worcester is. They know their strength of schedule. They know how good the team is. And so every time they come out, everybody wants to beat Worcester because of their current success. And so I just think that's one of those games where you just kind of got to realize that everybody wants to beat Worcester. And as you're looking at the highlights there, you see it is a different jersey style that Worcester possesses. A little bit of the checkered flag look kind of dating the Croatian style way back in the day. But interesting jersey style for Worcester. But nonetheless, they are number one in the area. Phenomenal record. For the boys player of the week, we're going to go a little bit of a different route. We love numbers. We love records. And we believe there has been a new state record set, but not by any team in our top five, set by our own St. Pete Spartans. The keeper, Angelo Gasper, had a state record, presumably a state record. The OHSAA is reviewing the footage right now of that he set 59 saves in a single game. There are keepers in the area that may not get that in their whole season this year, but Angelo Gasper, 59 saves and a loss to Genoa Christian. Brian got a chance to catch up to Angelo. Let's see how it went. Yeah, it feels pretty cool. It always feels nice to get some a little bit of recognition. I've been working really hard, just finally finally showing and I'm proud. It's a big accomplishment to me, but I, it doesn't, I don't really want it to mean anything too special. I don't want to get it over my head because I'm looking for soccer scholarships and I want to play, I want to get this game bigger. It's like, keep going. So after you coming off of a match where you have 59 saves, like what's next? Where do you go from here? <laughs> I don't even know, to be honest. You just gotta, you just can't get that over your head. You just gotta, if you want, celebrate it that night, get get your mind focused for the next day, practice, and get ready for the next game. Thanks, Brian. What a, what a great question. Where do you go from here? Most records, you, you do want to try and break and set new records. I don't know if that's a record you want to set again. 59 saves, an incredible performance. You know, that comes off earlier in the year, he had games of 40 saves and 32 as well. That's a lot of saves in just a couple of games. You know, this is a kid who wants to play the higher level. I think he has that ability. You know, talking with his coach a little bit, he's a good kid. He works hard. He's a good leader. It's just a young, young St. Pete's team. And so we're excited for him. We're excited to, that he might be holding a state record. We're waiting for confirmation from the OHSA about that as they're reviewing the game footage to make sure all 59 saves were, in fact, saves. But I believe the record was 54. So even if there is some error there, I think we got a record holder. So congratulations to Angelo. You know, we, we love looking at numbers, and certainly 59 is an incredible number. But there's another number of the week I want to key in on, and that's the number nine. That is the goals allowed by the Ontario Lady Warriors. Certainly, we love talking about their f phenomenal freshmen and how many goals they can score and how good they are. But there's a, a center back in Addie Turnbull, who I think maybe, arguably, one of the best center backs in the area, if not the state of Ohio. 
fantastic player, so calm and confident with the ball, which has helped to lead the Lady Warriors to just allowing nine goals and their difficult schedule. That is an impressive accolade. And so we just want to kind of give a shout out to the Lady Warriors, to Addie Turnball and the rest of the, the backs back there for Ontario. Fantastic campaign so far. Nine goals at this point in the season. Playing the schedule that they play is really a remarkable number. You know, one of the new things we're excited about here at the OH Report on the Soccer Locker is our new feature called Goals of the Week, in which you, the fans, get to decide what is the best goal of the week. So we have three nominees for Goal of the Week. We'll show them to you. You can comment below what is your favorite goal of the week, and we will announce the winner on the OH Report podcast on Monday. So let's take a look at our three nominees for this week's Goal of the Week. Coming in at number one from the Mansfield Christian Lexington game, Noel Bear just smashing the ball from about 35 yards out. One touch, top corner, just cracks this ball. You'll see just kind of a deflection that goes right to her and no hesitation, drills the ball, fantastic goal. And that's nominee number one, Mansfield Christian's Noel Bear. For number two, we have a great goal from Al Depperschmidt from Lexington, just doing what he does, beating a bunch of defenders and just a clinical finish in the corner. You'll see him here to slice through a couple of different Ottawa Hills defenders. This is a state-ranked Ottawa Hills team that Depperschmidt makes him just kind of look like cones as he gets through them, in and out, and just a clinical finish, bottom corner, beats the keeper, and that's just what Al Depperschmidt does, scores those goals. And then our final, number, final nominee, number three, from Madison, coming off a big corner kick, Taylor Tucker, a great ball in, and a great ball just driven past the keeper. And this is a big game. This is to take the lead against state-ranked Anthony Wayne. So three incredible goal nominees we're looking at here from Manso Christian, from Lexington, and from Madison. Comment below, what is your goal of the week? And we'll announce the winner on the next OH Report podcast. So a lot of great goals. We are so excited about this new feature. If you have a great goal that maybe you saw and you have footage of it, send it to us. We would love to see all the great goals that are happening. We're trying, we're, we're watching all the videos we can and we're looking, we're looking for those great goals. And so we've got a couple this week. I'm gonna continue to do this. And so we wanna see what great goals do you have and let us know where did we, or where did I go wrong in my rankings? Do you have a nominee for player of the week? I would love to hear from you. Let's argue. Let's have some fun. Let's talk a little soccer. Hey, don't forget to tune in on the next OH Report Soccer Locker. We'll see you soon.